Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. I was given a sermon. No, not a sermon. It's a sharing from Lord Kukma. He phoned me the day. At first I rejected that. I said, I cannot. The moment I stand up here, there's no voice coming from my mouth. I don't know what to speak. So I was very scary. I rejected the first time. Then he said, I have one. Seek the Lord. Huh? See, very. I said, okay, I think the Lord didn't really give me any answer. No, fair enough, no answer. <laughs> should, should I continue? But nevertheless, I can see that since we have studied one on one, that it was mentioned that uh, we have the opportunity to come up and speak, regardless how strong the faith is. See? So today I stand and face different people. <laughs> So to begin with, I will start about uh, a bit about my life. Okay, my name is Wong. My name is Kwok Kim. And in my early years, I was a non-believer. I was not a Christian. So even though I studied in mission school, we attend not prayer every Wednesday in the Sunday home. Pray the Lord's prayer first before the folks and then the principal announce announcements and things. But I go through the 11 years in the same schools and it was a national school. So what happens that when I finished my my studies in Cambridge, then we came up, I came up to work. So the first thing we look as as a student, you know, it's difficult to look for a job, is it? And here and here. So finally, I ended up in a first school. So it was a Lutong training school. So it was a three years training. And then we came up with the lowest pay. We started with a minimum scale. So it was the time was 235, about uh, 1970. So what happens? We have to go through stages before we can go up and climb up all the way to uh, promotion. So at our lowest grade, we start at uh, one and a half years, and this is for one, one taste, and then another year, another taste, and then wait for a year, then you get the junior format. So I was, I was a taste to distribution. It's about control system. So later on, as you come to a junior state, you have to travel a little bit. We don't have to skip one job. So God is leading me through that way, though I do not know him yet. See? But I know there is someone unknown to God. But I did pray for him, but I do not know whether there is truly there is a God here. So I continue. The company sent me to offshore, workshop, and then to exploration weeks. And let it on with all the skills that I have. Then he sent me to another place to Laguan. In Laguan, I was supposed to stay for three years. Then, somehow, I was quiet after three years. So maybe my boss was saying that you are getting the boss to be the present job. So I said, I, I don't say I'm happy or not. I, say, I feel I'm content with the working people and the people around me are all obedient. Cooperating and helping one another, even the superintendent. They are very good. All of them are very good. Even maintaining the engineer are good as well. So, by working in that type of relationship, you don't feel that like boring, by like carrying on working. So, what happens is then the Lord continued me to another seven years working there, 10 years for Singapore. So, in 10 years' time, we learn a lot of things especially on process, veterans, exporting, uh, all, all around the field in instrumentation, you have to know. So actually, I become a journalist into a specialist. <laughs> so, so then I request to come back, I say, I have to stay for two, so long. But during my time in law body, so also, I find that sometimes after work, you don't have much thing to do. And then join with friends, have a game, and turn up, 
the potential that it turn into from the church prayer, the uh, Holy Savior, the church of Holy Savior in the world. So what happens next? I came to know the Lord too. There's a lady from Air Force who always come to our house to meet Lucy, my wife, and they have a Bible study together. At first, I rejected them, so I didn't enjoy them. Let them continue what they are doing. So one day, I feel myself, and then, you know, why, why husband and husband? Then I joined to play with kids at the church day. Basketball, uh, uh, or even swimming uh, as well. So, so that's a very good time that we come in. And then gradually, I joined in the cell group. <laughs> so, since after that I joined the cell group, then I came to know the Lord. So it was in 1980-something, I can't remember the second year, I was baptized in Toronto at the Church of Holy Savior. And after that, some time later, I fell sick when I was in working in the terminal. Because the first sickness that I had is uh, when I was working hard in the outside in the field and came back and do my administration. Uh, during the time I was a supervisor, I was promoted to supervisor. To support supervisor. So I had to take a man and then put me up to me. I had to tell them what to do and I had to check them from time to time how the job is in progress. So what happens next? So one day as I went out and come back from the field, I was sweating and went to the cold. Suddenly, I feel suffocating or short breath. And then not long, I feel there's, when I feel, I feel there's a recent sound from the lung. So that's a sign of total and cold, total analysis, asthma. Then he checked on me whether I have they told me, do you have any family or any background with an asthma? I told them no. no. I don't care. So he gave me the carrot to, to use. Then I find that in using the carrot, there's a difficulty for me when the time really happened. It comes. I was too slow to react. Then I feel vomiting. Even driving, I can't stay. I have to stop and vomit. And continue before I wish to see the GP, Dr. Wong. He was the best among the time I know. So I meet him. I tell him my situation. So he said, I will give me a check. After the check, he asked me to rest, and rest for a while and then continue to the home. Okay? The moment the check was taken, okay. Then, towards in the evening, about 1 to 3 o'clock in the morning, that was a difficult time. It appears back again. It comes back again. So what you do? You can't lie down. The moment you lie down, you find yourself so fight, so difficult to move. So if you sit straight, relax. That's the best time you can think of. You lie down, you come back. You lie down, you come back. So you can't do anything. You can't do anything. So the next morning to see, the moment that occurred, we have to see Dr. Wong. We to his house. Dr. Wong gave me another chair. It was the following day and another chair. So I said, no hope. There's no hope. Because it is important like that the feeling, the difficulties that you have in both in your body, you feel so, so bad. You can't really take it. So I said, the Lord again. I asked the Lord, my children are still young. Why do you want to take my life now? Give me some years to live on. Wait until you grow up, they get a job, then you take me alive. It's okay, I don't, I don't mind. You see, when I read the Bible, it's a cure. When you are sick, you pray to God, and God enters his life for 15 years. That's amazing, you see. So many a time, you know, I went to church, the church say, we have a healing ministry, we have death, and this and that. But look at it. I try myself to involve so hard in. Maybe it's the desire of my heart. It's there. <laughs> the Lord didn't give my answer. So, so I pray, continuing pray. I ask him again. I tell him again. My children are young. They are only primary school. They are still long way to go. What should I do? You must let me continue for the time I need to go to the 
they can look for a job themselves, and then the time I say, I can go out there. <coughs> but Kai and now, a person from the same company, he was an electrician. And I'm in school. Because in school, we have to know every discipline. Not only in school, we have to know the, 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 the chemical, we have to know process production, and we have to know the electrical as well. Because there's a part in scope of our books, so we mix the world with these people as well. So this electrician approached me and said, Wong, I have something for you, he said. I have something for you. Though we do not know each other so well, he introduced me and said, I have something for you. So these are, there are a few kinds of vitamins, you just take and see what happens. So finally, I said, since I have no alternative, doctor only gave me injection. I can't do anything. It will occur, it will occur. See, Western, Western medicine and Chinese medicine are quite uh, just different. Yeah. Because if you see doctors, they either diagnose you, the last solution, cut, they say to remove whatever. See. But in this case, there's nothing to cut. You cut my lung, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I say, Okay, I will try this. I try this uh, vitamins. Well, he introduced seven, uh, I think it was four types of vitamins. And this protein I take for two weeks. After two weeks later, strange things happened. I was healed completely. I don't hear any go missing some, and I don't hear any, uh, I don't have to go to this doctor and go for a check, this thing. So I was very fortunate. So, so God could be answered my prayer in, 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 in the last, I should say, the last, last night. Okay? So, this doesn't happen so smoothly as life goes on. There will be temptation for this time to come in as well. See? But my problem is mostly on sickness. Okay, my second sickness come in when, uh, when it was on the 19th. In the 90s, I discovered that uh, when, when I was about to buy a life insurance at the time, they checked me. And then that one, they said that uh, you have to go for a doctor repeat test. So I go for a doctor repeat test. They said that it's only a protein that says that the egg is not insurance. Well, I said, in that case, they forget about insurance. I said, why should I add? And then it's only a yearly dream. I didn't, I didn't get a policy. Then, not long, not long, not later, I was uh, at an overhead bridge in Mary. And I'm, uh, it's an overhead bridge here, along NDC. There's an overhead bridge here. So what happened is, as I come up from the Chinese Sensei shop, I feel myself so hard to breathe. So as, as the moment I come up to this case, a few steps out, I discovered that quite severely, I feel unconscious. I was tempted to I was down. And Lucy was at my side, my wife was at my side. She kept yelling and, and called for help. It was another employee of Cheryl, so passing by. So he gave us a leave to a little clinic that time. Then we diagnosed, and the doctor said, we have a high potassium. That's why your heart stops and you couldn't breathe, collapse. So the emergency emergency treatment was only against my life was safe. Hmm. The third time was that uh, when my children was overseer of me and my uh, young was in Sweden and my youngest was in England at the time he was having the first child born. So I was, instead of crawling to my children until their birth, I was live until today, and I can see that I become grandfather already. <laughs> 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 so, when my, life, when, when my wife went over to, to England for my child confinement time, so I had to be alone at home. Another mysterious thing happened to me again. This time is a urine of blood. You know, 
when you urine or blood, up, there's a sign. It's either in the urinary system, in something wrong, or infection, or something ruptured <coughs> in your body that causes blood in your urine. So at that time, I, I do not want to see doctors. I really want to look to our God and seek for His help. So when I was alone at time, I really prayed hard on, them, on the issue. So what happened is that when, when I very sick got a time, it thinks a voice, a small voice come to my head, come to me, and spoke to me. He said, Well, you need not have to eat this, 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 or this or things. Uh, all you have to do to eat this is fine enough, I follow his instruction and follow. Him. So at that time, I was thick on more on baby foods and vegetarians and some of the, not on the solid food, and not on the, on the, on the meat side of it. So two weeks later, I find that strange in the bird. It disappeared completely. There's no more green people. So I find that, well, seek the Lord and trust the Lord. I put all your anxiety into him. He will really pray for you. So that's what that is. I think I think because of my conversion between the baptism at the time because when I was sick at the time, asthma at the time was so bad that I seek Lord because <coughs> I asked myself, we do I go to my time? Where do I go up right now? See, a lot of people will ask that question and say. Do I go to hell or go to heaven? Is there a heaven? If there's a God, it must be a devil or so. So, what you think is up to you, but hear the words of God uh, and believe in Him and you will be saved. That's what our 101 John 5, uh, John 5, 24. <laughs> Mention that. So, last part of this. Thank you for hearing. but rather uh, what God has taught me over the many years uh, when uh, I became king, I came to know him at the age of 20, so many years ago now. Um, Men Sunday, so I want to say, say something about men. Uh, I've learned over the years that men must lead. Men must lead. And because we are made to lead, we are made to lead. So I want to say something about uh, what God has taught me over these years, that uh, every man, every man, every single one has to be a leader of some kind. So where do I start? So in the beginning, around the Bible, in the beginning God made what happened with the earth. Uh, so we have um, <laughs> Adam and Eve. So we know the Bible, then we know that Adam was created on the sixth day by God. That's the climax of God's creation. And uh, on the sixth day, as we read from uh, chapter 2 of Genesis, that out of dust that God made Adam. And then, uh, and then he put man in the Garden of Eden. And he commanded him that he should not eat certain fruits, or fruits in the, on a certain tree. And then later on, God finds that uh, it's no good for Adam uh, to be alone. Now Adam was not lonely, yeah, because God was accompanying him, but he was alone. So uh, God uh, made uh, Adam to fall into a deep sleep, and then took a rib uh, out of his rib cage, and then out of that rib, he made uh, God made Eve. Okay, so here you are happily married. So Adam and Eve on the picture. In fact, this picture is not quite right. 
uh, I don't know about Adam and Eve, but certainly it seems the serpent is not quite right. The serpent only crawl on his belly after uh, he's been cursed by God. So one presumed that uh, he probably had legs when he was he met uh, Eve. So that may not be correct. But don't worry, it's just uh, illustration. Yeah. So Eve was uh, uh, so made by God from uh, one of uh, Adam's uh, rib, and uh, she became a helper, a helper of Adam. So. And uh, later on in chapter 3, obviously we uh, know very familiar the, uh, the fall of man, okay, how Eve was uh, tempted by the serpent. Uh, two things need to note. One is serpent started off uh, telling Eve that God really was a liar. Okay? When he said to you or to Adam that you're not supposed to eat the fruits of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you will, uh, you will eat it, you will surely die, and the serpent said, oh no, you will not surely die, will you? Yeah. And then later on, uh, Satan, the serpent also said that, uh, wow, God tried to stop you from eating those fruit because you, after eating those fruit, then you will become God. Wow, how tempting it is to become God. So that's the tactic that Satan uh, was using. So what we had was, uh, Adam actually was decreed well, by God to lead. So, Adam uh, was created first, and Eve came from Adam, and Eve was made as a helper of Adam. And then God's command was not directed to Eve. Actually, Eve got the command second hand. Yeah. Eve got the command from Adam, because God's command was to Adam. However, we know, obviously, that uh, the first human pair uh, sinned against God. And why did they sin against God? <laughs> because Adam failed to lead. First, Adam didn't speak out. Genesis 3, 6. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Now let's look at uh, that Adam didn't speak a thing. Adam was standing by the side of Adam, uh, Eve, but he didn't say anything. So Adam didn't speak up. And secondly, uh, let's not forget that he was with her. Right? Very clearly stated in the Bible. Yeah? Adam was standing by, listening to what Eve was talking. Yeah? And what the Satan was talking, but he was standing there. As, like most men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all like listen, but perhaps we don't want to say much. Yeah? So. And secondly, Adam refused to take the blame. Genesis 3.12 tells us, The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree, and I ate it. Okay, just a very short sentence. And Adam was very good in killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> one bird was God, and the other bird, obviously, sorry, it was Eve. So, he was blaming the woman yeah, that you put there. Okay, so it's, it's uh, very concise, isn't it? Extremely concise. So, Killing two birds with one stone. So Adam failed to lead. He refuses. He didn't speak out, and also refused to take the blame, as like most men. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the result? The paradise was lost. <clears throat> now we may laugh about it now, but that was the greatest tragedy happened in human history. That we lost the paradise because the first human pair, our first ancestor, sinned against God, disobeyed God. So the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden. You can almost imagine that when uh, Adam and Eve packed their bags, if they had bags at that time, <laughs> yeah, they kicked out the Garden of Eden, and you can imagine almost a conversation. Eve saying, Adam, 
well, where are we going to live? <coughs> and then Adam will probably say, it's all because of you. <laughs> we lost our home now. <laughs> and then he probably say, why didn't you say anything? <laughs> you should have stopped me. So, obviously again, we can laugh about it, but that was the greatest tragedy. Now, when we laugh about it, I just want to emphasize, this is the very foundation of our Christian faith. So let us not take this as a, a story. It is not, it is a story in one sense, but it's a narrative of real thing. So the lesson for us, man must lead. I mean, must take the lead. So the areas of that we should lead, first of all, obviously from what we learned just now from Adam and Eve, we must lead in our marriage. Okay. <coughs> Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 and 24. I think a lot of us are very familiar with this passage. Wives, submit to your own husband. Now, don't get too excited first, okay? The, the wives, <laughs> otherwise, we say, come on, Marcus, get off. <laughs> uh, wives, submit to your own husband, as to the Lord. For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is head of the church. And he's the savior of the body, therefore just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Now, this passage obviously directed to Christian couples. Okay? The both, both couples, wife and husband, are Christians. So if you are a Christian wife, and you are obviously, in that sense, subject to Christ, so therefore the scripture asks us that you should also subject to your husband. Now, subject uh, is a very sometimes very sensitive word. Yeah, particular in the uh, well, uh, certainly in the West. I'm not sure about here. Back in the, in the Far East, that obviously you got these women live now uh, since the 60s, 70s, and now obviously uh, men and women are pretty much equal. Yeah, in society, a lot of yeah, women wives are having their own jobs, and in fact, a lot of them are earning a lot more than their husbands. Okay, so how can you, the, as a the bread earner, so subject to your husband. Right, so this is not so much about obedience, but rather as a kind of recognizing that God has given the authority to man as being the head of the household, such in the same way as Christ being the head of the church. Okay, so therefore, once you recognize that, it's not too difficult to be subject to your husbands. And bear in mind the husband were also commanded, look, husband, love your wives, just as Christ loved the church and gave himself out for her. So therefore husbands, including myself, okay, we have been asked to love our wives just as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He gave himself out for her. So therefore, wives, uh, dear sisters, if your husband really loved you so much, just like Christ loved the church, I am sure there's no problem or being subject to your husband. So, in marriage. And secondly, in family. And you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bringing them up in the training and admonition of the Lord, Ephesians 6, 4. So I've been a father for a good many years, and I'm saying I learned through that process. And certainly the Word of God <coughs> is directed us as men that we must take up the responsibility of being the leader in the family. That is to say, disciplining uh, our children, don't just leave it to your wives, okay? We might be away most of the day when we're working, yeah? but let us take up the responsibility. <coughs> I know that a lot of men certainly abdicate the, uh, the disciplining of children to their wives, and often because of character. Sometimes the man is a little bit soft, yeah? The, the wise little bit yeah, of a strong character and like to discipline. But obviously I'm not saying that mothers and wives should not discipline their children. But what I'm saying is both should take up their responsibility, but especially for men. Okay? Disciplining should be the prime regime of fathers. So let us take the lead in the family to be uh, the leader, to discipline and to teach our children. And for this, I, 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 perhaps I was I'm grateful to God that uh, 
obviously, when I, much like most young fathers, I mean, when you became a father, you haven't got a clue what you're supposed to be doing, <laughs> yeah, let alone disciplining. Uh, but, I mean, what you learn is from, I mean, uh, how you've been disciplined by your own father. Unfortunately, I, oh, not fortunate, but I was blessed that I became a Christian and I wasn't disciplining my children in the same way as uh, my father disciplined me, which was in a very harsh way. And then finally, in church. In church. Jesus is the head of the church, is a man. The twelve apostles are men. Elders and deacons are men. Seems they must be husband or one wife. Okay. So therefore, all the pointers pointing at we men must take the lead in church. Now, I'm not saying that women uh, have no place in church. Now, this is not my implying. Okay. Women certainly have their ministries, their role to play in church. But <coughs> fortunately, we have a uh, pastor who is a man. I know that some churches have pastors who are women. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to enter into theological uh, debate, but this is not certainly it's not my preference. <laughs> I don't mind to have a, uh, a pastor, if a group of pastors pastoring the church, but one or two uh, women, but not certainly the senior pastor who is all basically the figurehead of the church. I think men should lead. And that applies to all the ministries. Yeah? While women certainly have roles to play, and certainly we have silent as in the, in the eldership, as in the pastoral team, but we men must lead. Okay, we must lead in the church. Okay, we may not be all elders and pastors, but certainly we can be leadership, yeah, in one way or another. So it's something that we I want to encourage all my brothers, yeah, to yeah, whether you're young, middle age, or rather senior, yeah, uh, become a senior citizen. There's no, it's not never too late to lead. Never too late. So so just. Uh, finish up with some thoughts on leadership development. Nothing too too fantastic or too. First, we must cultivate the fruit of the spirit. Okay, that's very important. Okay, it's not so much what we can do that please God; it's who we are that pleases God most. Okay? So we must daily yeah, cultivate the fruit of the spirit in our lives: love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Gentleness, self-control. Yeah, I heard of a sermon, a very famous uh, preacher from Britain, and he said over a 25-year period, he prayed day and night. Yeah, that God will help him produce the fruit of the spirit. And secondly, we must seek and develop spiritual gifts. Yeah, Ephesians chapter four, Romans twelve, and also First Corinthians twelve. Okay, there's no excuse because God has given us. Each one of us, at least one spiritual gift. So don't, there's no excuse saying that, oh, I can't do other things other people do. No, God has given you at least one spiritual gift. You, know, you don't know your spiritual gift, let us try to find out. Yeah? Let's pray about it. Let's ask other people what you are good at. Okay? And God will give you. Now, once you have the desire to serve Him, God will give you a spiritual gift. And finally, Make yourself available. Make yourself available. Uh, I will try to. Uh, I, I won't try to make myself too busy. But I will try to make myself available uh, at home uh, when my wife wants me. Do some washing up. Take the washing out or, or do something for me. Yeah. Yeah, running around for her yeah. and also in church as well. Yeah. Uh, so make yourself available. Never let the fire in your heart go up. Keep your life, serve the Lord. Let's remember, serving the Lord is just con not confining in church. We can serve our Lord in our marriage, serve our wife is serving the Lord. No, that's, don't forget. Now, serving our kids also. Now, disciplining our children is also serving the Lord. And last but not least, obviously, serving the church. Okay, so let us find time and be available and develop our spiritual gifts so that we can Please, our thank you.
receive a WhatsApp a message from Brother Kong Mao that the man should be dressed in white and uh, black and with blue tie. <laughs> I'm not trying to be rebellious. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> uh, in lesson six of one on one, we study about uh, saturating our life with God's word. Um, in other words, we must be consistent in the daily intake of God's word into our, every part of our being. Lesson eight is uh, the study of saturating our life with prayer. Our conversation with God becomes a, a lifestyle, meaning we don't only call God when we are in trouble, but when we are happy, we forgot about God. My song is uh, is an old gospel song. Um, it's entitled What is it again? <laughs> God on the mountain. I just want to make it. Now, um, this song is a. Uh, this song is uh, about uh, telling us about. We must be always uh, uh, God in front of us, whether during our happy time or even during our um, uh, when we are in trouble. I would like to dedicate this song to the passengers of uh, MH370. Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace like you never know. But when things change and you're down in the Oh, oh. 